This is my 2 by 72 inch tilting belt grinder. It can run in either vertical or horizontal mode. You'll notice when I tilt it, the table does not tilt with it. Speaking of the table, it can be adjusted vertically without affecting its angle. That way you're able to wear out the whole surface of the belt evenly when it's in horizontal mode. Until now, I've just had two tables for it. There's this one, which is welded solid, fixed at 90 degrees. And I also have this one that's 45 degrees, also welded solid. So I like these tables simply because they are dead reliable. When you have it welded solid like that, you can't knock it out of square. If I do that to it, it is still square. And the same thing with this one. So these have their place, but they're not ideal because what if I need a 28.7 degree angle? So in this video, I'm gonna be making one that has a hinge across here so it can be adjusted. Here you can see why it's nice to have two fixed tables. When I need to switch from grinding at 90 degrees to grinding at 45 degrees, I can just swap them. So the hinge is gonna lay right across here. To make more room for that, I'm gonna notch this out like so. Okay, now we're ready to make the hinge itself. For that, I'm gonna use a piece of DOM. This is a four inch long piece, one inch outside diameter, half inch inside diameter. And if you're not familiar with what DOM is, that stands for drawn over mandrel. It's just a type of really precise, seamless tubing, and you can get it with a thick wall, obviously. A bolt will go right through that, and the table is gonna tilt around that bolt. There's one thing I wanna do before I weld this on, and that is to cap the end of the tube here. I chamfered all of these edges, so I'll be able to fill that in with weld and then grind it all flush so it'll look like one piece. Holding this in place was a very clumsy operation, but it worked. A small magnet would have been better. So there's supposed to be a 3 8 inch offset from this surface to the front of this bar. So I just clamped the DOM directly to the table and then I'll use a piece of 3 8 flat bar to offset this the correct amount. Here I'm just making sure the post and the DOM are perpendicular before welding them together. So you'll notice I've positioned the hinge as close to the belt as possible. It's actually so close that it hits at the same time as the table holder hits down here. You want this hinge as close to the belt as possible, simply because you want the support directly under the spot where there's load here. So next up, I'm gonna start working on a square frame that will go under the table. The table will be welded on top of it. This frame will include the outer two pieces of the hinge and also a locking mechanism to lock the angle of the table.
So these are the two side plates for what I'm gonna call the table frame. This hole and this hole are gonna be half inch, and then there's this curved slot here, which will be 3 8 inch. Now I'm gonna pilot drill all of these because the position of this hole relative to this slot is pretty important. So when you're pilot drilling, you wanna choose the size of drill bit based on the size of the little flat spot across the end of the larger drill. You don't want to use a bit bigger than that or you're going to wear out the edges of the larger drill bit unevenly. Okay, so I got in a hurry and put too much downforce on it and broke the bit. Now you see I'm holding the handle a little closer to the center, so I'm not able to put as much downforce on it. That should keep me from breaking more bits. Got all the pilot holes drilled, now I'm moving up to the half inch bit for these two holes, and 3 8 inch for the four holes that I'm able to drill in the slot. Pilot drilling also allows you to drill two holes right together like this without a risk of the second one drifting into the first one. Now we can check the accuracy of this. That should be 1 and 9 sixteenths between them, or 1.5625. 1 1.561, about three thousandths off. Again, within about one and a half thousandths, and again, about three and a half off. All of them are within five thousandths. So I should be able to stick the hacksaw blade right through here and cut down on either side of that broke off drill bit. I'm gonna clamp on this block to guide the file so I don't accidentally make the end of the slot square. To be sure I have the slot cleared out enough, I can just take a caliper and go around here making sure it's at least two and seven sixteenths everywhere. And then I can also go along the inside making sure it's no more than one and nine sixteenths. So that's all finished. If you're anything like me, this camera angle makes you want to duck. Okay, now to complete this frame, I'm gonna use these 3 16 by 3 quarter flat bars. One in the back and one in the front, like that. I've chamfered all these edges so I have a spot to fill with weld. I have everything sitting nice and flat on the table. This bolt is tightened and I've just laid this piece in between here and gotten it lined up with the end. So it's all ready to weld in place. So that's just nice and snug, so it's, it's not too hard to turn, and yet it's not loose, which is perfect. We need to finish the locking mechanism here. So for that, I'm gonna grind a little piece out of this. That'll be welded onto the DOM right here, and a bolt will go through this slot to lock it in place. So you'll be able to rotate this and lock it at any point. So this mechanism will be very similar to the main tilt hinge on the grinder.
here you can see how it's actually going to work. You have a bolt that's welded in place, so that slot rotates around the bolt. Now we're ready to weld that little tab on, so I'm starting by getting the table set to exactly 90 degrees and locking that securely in place. Now I install a one and a half inch long 3 8 bolt through the tab, put two washers on it, and that gets installed through the slot. Then another washer on the outside and a nut. This all gets pushed up to the very end of the slot and tightened in place. And that's ready to be welded together. Now it's worth taking some time at this point to make sure you got everything right and double check that it's square. And I'm just going to weld it here and here, not along the sides. I'm welding only top and bottom and not along the sides because welding the side could warp the thing sideways and that'll interfere with how it locks. Just welding the top and bottom will be plenty strong. Now the bolt is trapped in there, but that's fine. We're going to weld it in place so it doesn't turn when you're trying to lock it. You have to kind of maneuver the table frame into place. Okay, we're almost done. All I need to do is weld the table surface on and make a locking handle. But before I cover this up with the table, I want to show you some of the close clearances in here, just to show you why this was kind of an interesting design challenge. You probably saw my previous video where I made this new table holder. I had to do that mostly for this table. Notice the shape of the table holder tube. It's straight across the top and then angled 45 degrees. This angle had to be there to make enough room here for the table, but this had to be straight to make enough room for the hinge. This side of the frame had to be far enough over that it would clear this corner and this bolt, which coincidentally is the same distance over that this side had to be to make room for this piece to extend past the side of the table tube to hold the locking mechanism. The back of the table tube and this edge of the table frame and the back of the DOM and the top of the table frame all need to be in line so that this can get as close to the belt as possible but yet this still clears. And then also when you tilt this back to vertical... Okay, Joe, that's enough rambling. People are here to see you build the table. You're right. I like the size of my old 45 degree table pretty well. I just want it a little longer this way. So we just need to square up the edges on this and also cut this side to a 45 degree angle. Uh, it's hard to draw on that. I was out of coarse grits for the belt grinder, so this took a lot of grinding with a hand grinder and fine belts on the belt grinder. I tilted the grinder to 90 degrees and removed the belt, and now I have this set to 45 degrees. I'm going to slide it in until it almost hits. Here's my finished table. I'm going to put that on here and slide it up until it touches the platen, and I'll mark that on the bottom. I got my mark here that tells me where to position this this way, and I drew two marks equidistant from the sides so I can center this side to side. So this is just going to be tacked in place, just a maybe six tack welds around it. That's all that's going to hold the table surface on. There's two reasons for that. The main reason is if you weld it solid, it will warp the table surface. And I want to make sure that the table surface stays flat. I did the same thing on this 45 degree table. These supports are welded solidly onto the bar, but then the table surface is just tack welded onto those. So the table is dead flat and that's been working great. Also, I put quite a bit of time into this whole adjustment system and I don't want to lose this if I damage the table. So if it's just held by a few tack welds, I can just cut those tack welds off and replace the table surface. So I just finished welding this and I can hold my hand on it. So I think that's a pretty good sign. It probably hasn't warped too much because it's not hot. So that's dropped down as low as it can go and you can just see a sliver of light. It just barely goes low enough. So one thing I want to check before I take this apart and paint it is 
if it travels far enough. If it goes clear to 90 degrees, and if it goes clear to 45 degrees, or if it stops short. If it stops short, I'm gonna have to file out the end of the slot a little bit. Okay, that's good. We have just a little bit of over travel. It actually goes past 90. And now I'll check the 45 degree with a precision protractor. I would say that is pretty much dead on 45, so good enough. That's good enough, but I really wish it had a little bit of over travel on both ends. In hindsight, I should have drilled the two 3 8 holes on the ends of the slot a little further out. I will have a set of plans available for this, and I'll make sure to include that tip in the plans. This lock nut is just there to keep the bolt from moving around. It's not tightened. I was fully planning to make a locking handle for this that would be the same design as these, but it occurred to me that I can't put that on. I won't be able to thread it on because it'll hit the bottom of the table. And I could make a shorter version of this, but well, these are honestly already a little short as they are. So I'm gonna stick with using a wrench on this. You could totally make a little handle if you wanted, but this is how I'm gonna do it. And now finally, I'm able to set up that 28.7 degree angle that I never needed. Thanks for watching. By the way, I will have PDF plans available for this table, and I already have plans available for pretty much everything else on this grinder, so check the description for links to that.